This is the Evolution Rage 5 table saw. This machine uses a 10 inch blade which has a 25.4mm bore or 1 inch. This machine will cut wood, metal or plastic with the supplied blade. The machine is very portable, you can quite easily move it about on the job site and once it is set up it is very easy to use. When you get this machine at first it does actually require quite a lot of assembly and that will take a couple of hours to assemble. At the front of the machine we have the on off switch that is designed so that it is difficult to start but very easy to stop so to start it you need to lift up that flap press the green button that will then start the machine to stop it all you need to do is hit the stop button and that will stop it i have to admit that i actually broke that part off when i was doing something so you may see a bit of footage where i don't actually have that part on the machine but it is important to have that on because it is very quick to stop the machine. All you need to do is simply hit the red button and that will stop it. We have the rise and fall hand wheel for raising and lowering the blade. And that can also be used to adjust the angle of the blade. All you need to do is unlock that lever and then you can push the hand wheel in and you can turn that and that will adjust the angle of the blade. There's also a gauge on the bottom there and that will tell you the angle which the blade is set at. On the left hand side of the machine we have blade storage and also tool storage. This machine actually comes with the two spanners required to change the blade. Also at the left hand side we have a knob at the front which you can turn and also one at the back if you undo those two you can then slide out the work support on the left hand side of the machine you can then tighten the screws back up at the right hand side of the machine we have storage space for the push stick There's also this lever, if we pull that lever back you can then pull out the work support on the right hand side of the machine and you can simply lock that in any position you like simply by pressing down on that lever. I have had problems with the blade guard and the problem is that once the machine is running you obviously don't want to put your fingers anywhere near that and when you do fire the machine up it does tend to make the blade guard fall down with the vibration. And that can be a problem because some pieces of material actually jam and hit the blade guard without lifting it up. So that's only a minor niggle and I'm pretty sure that that could be easily fixed. But apart from that the blade guard and the dust extraction is absolutely superb. The rip fence is an absolute piece of cake to adjust. You simply lift up that lever and you can then slide that to whichever position you want and then you can lock that in position. The VIP fence plate can be adjusted and that is secured in position with these two thumb turn screws on the back there. Once you tighten the two screws for the face plate there it tends to lift it up a bit which creates a bit of a gap. That can be a problem if you're cutting some thin material as it can actually slide underneath that. So what I tend to do is loosen off the two screws press down on it and just insert a couple of washers above the screws like so and then re-tighten the two screws and that actually gets rid of the gap you can then cut thin material without any fear of it sliding underneath the face plate. The machine has two T slots one on either side of the blade and that is where you can insert the mitre gauge and clamp. On the left hand side of the machine we've actually got a small hole there and you can slide that into there and then you can tighten up the screw and then underneath the machine if you grab that knob and pull it down and turn it 90 degrees that then releases the sliding carriage and I have to say that this sliding carriage is an absolute brilliant idea. 
you can use that for cross cutting or rip cutting and it really does make the job so easy. The actual slide mechanism is very precise so it does give you good control over any material that you are pushing through the machine. If you undo this and then use the actual T-slots that are machined into the base of the machine there is a little bit of movement whereas if you take it back there and fix it to the sliding mechanism there is absolutely no movement at all and you get a really smooth and controlled push all the way through the machine. So that is a really really good idea. I really like that a lot and I have used that on numerous occasions. You can also adjust the mitre gauge by undoing that and then you can cut your material at a fixed angle should you require it to do so. The clamping mechanism is very easy to use. You can simply raise that up, put the workpiece underneath and then clamp that down. Once that's clamped down to the sliding carriage you can then successfully cut the material very easily indeed. On the back of the machine we have a dust extraction port that goes underneath, collects the dust from underneath the blade. We then have this large hose that goes and connects to the blade guard on the top. So what I'm going to do is just take the vacuum cleaner, push that in there and when you're using the machine that takes away the majority of the dust. I have to say that the lead supplied with the machine is a little bit on the short side but that doesn't really matter, you can plug it into an extension lead. You do get the two hooks supplied on the machine as well for the lead storage. The beauty of this saw is that it is very portable and it is very easy to store and move. So you fold the machine up, simply press on that lever. You can then just tilt the machine up. Once you've done that you can then tilt the machine back and you can move that absolutely anywhere. It is very easy to move and obviously you can put it wherever you want and it's not going to take up a lot of space. To reassemble the machine simply let it go down onto the stand there and then push down on the handles and then you can simply put the machine back for use. So it is very easy to move and very easy to store. Now I've shown you some of the features of the machine, I'm going to show you exactly what this machine can cut. Obviously a machine like this is very noisy and it is essential that you wear a pair of safety glasses and a pair of ear defenders when you're using it. For that reason I'm going to mute a lot of the volume but now I'm going to show you some examples of exactly what this machine can cut.
I'm now going to change the blade on this machine. At the minute we've got the Evolution multi-purpose blade in there. I'm actually going to put one in for cutting acrylic which has more teeth. So we need to ensure that the machine is unplugged. On the left hand side down there we actually have the two spanners that we need to remove the blade. We now need to lift the blade up fully. We can do that just by turning that handle until it reaches the top and then we just need to remove the guard. So I'm just going to unscrew that, take the bolt out and pop that to the side. Then take a flat bladed screwdriver, just turn that screw 90 degrees and you can then remove the insert. So we now take the larger of the two spanners, slide that over there till it's on the flange nut. Then take the other spanner and put that onto the bolt head. Once that's on there, to undo it, you actually pull the spanner towards you, like so. Just give that a couple of turns and then you can undo that with your fingers. You can now remove the bolt. And then we can remove the blade and the flange nut. Take the gloves off. Once we've got that off, we can then simply lift the blade off. Like so. I've now got a new blade, which has a 25.4 millimeter bore or one inch. It's also 10 inches. So that will fit straight in. It is important that you get a blade that can cope with the speed of the machine. So the maximum RPM on this is 5,500. So I'm just gonna push that down there into the slot and then ensure it's located correctly. Once that's located, I'm going to put the flange nut back on. And then I'm going to put the bolt back in. Now I've got the blade on there, I'm just going to remove my gloves. Again, we'll take the large spanner, put that onto the flange nut, and then take the smaller spanner and tighten up the bolt. Once you've done that, if you just give the blade a spin, just to ensure that it's not obscured by anything, it's not catching and ensure that it is located correctly. You can now put the insert back in. You can then put the guard back on. We can then plug the machine in and then we can then test that out. The sliding mechanism on the saw is absolutely superb and it can make cutting straight cuts very easy indeed. However, sometimes when you need to cut a piece that's too large to fit in there, you can actually swap this round by undoing that screw. I know this is the incorrect way to do it, but it is a very effective way and can make cutting some work pieces a lot easier. So if we put that in there that way around, and then take the piece that wouldn't normally fit on the sliding mechanism, we can then align that with the blade. So we get our cut line in the exact correct position. And to set this up properly, you may need a straight edge. Obviously when you do this, you're better off doing it with the machine unplugged. Once we've done that, we can then lower the clamp down and we can tighten that fully. That will then hold the piece of material 
So we've now got that firmly fixed on the sliding mechanism so we can now perform a very safe straight cut on this piece of material very easily. So that's the Evolution Rage 5 table saw. It can cut a vast amount of materials and it cuts them very quickly and very cleanly. The table itself can be moved very easily and it is very portable. There's just a couple of minor issues such as the blade guard etc but they are nothing serious. The machine is absolutely fantastic at what it does. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already.